the power of a prophet is not mundane. A prophet is supposed to grow until he becomes one of the elders of heaven. That's, that's the authority of a prophet. A prophet is an elder among men. That's why a prophet doesn't speak because he read the book. When a prophet talks, he is penetrating beyond time. He is talking things that are before the foundation of the world. And that's why God sends prophets into territories as quality control agents. Because when the earth begins to lose balance, you will need a prophet to come back and draw the line. A prophet can tell you that before the world was created, this is how God wanted it. Not because he read the book, it's because he can journey through time into eternity and he will bring you the perspective of Zion. Hope you know that Moses was telling us things that happened before men were created. That means by the power of the prophetic, you can go be before the age of man. Because Moses actually traveled beyond the age of man. When he said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, there was no man. He was operating in the office of a prophet. Because the office of the prophet is older than man. That's why Moses told us how man was created. He said, God gathered the dust from the ground. How can a man be telling you how man was created? Because when you enter the office of the prophet, you come to the assembly of the elders. The elders are the custodians of the secrets of God. When John was carried to heaven in Revelation chapter 5, the Bible said he wept because he didn't see hope for the earth realm until one of the elders came to him and said, Weep not. He said, Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he has prevailed. So a prophet is an elder in Zion. And the reason he's an elder is because he carries ancient secrets that are older than time. So the authority of the prophet are the secrets that are committed to him, not the car he drives. That's why when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, it was not angels that came to him. It was prophets. Prophets came. And he said they were telling him what he will do in Jerusalem. Because when Jesus became a man, he needed the elders to show up and guide him on how to walk as a man. Because prophets are elders in Zion. When your prophetic office is accomplished, your rank is that you are enthroned in the world to come. You become an elder. But when you don't know the powers of service and ministry, you will reduce your ministry to the kind of car you drive. The prophets of old, they were so burdened about Zion that they were never part of civilization. And so in those days, when you are looking for a prophet, you will find him in the cave. Because he is having meetings in heaven. Meetings. There are meetings in Zion. They are, they are negotiating about Canada. What will be the move of God in Canada? And prophets are summoned from the earth. And say, what do you think about Canada? When should there be a visitation? Those were the prophets of God. Did you not read that when God was going to destroy Sodom, God said, will I do a thing and not tell my servant Abraham? Because he called Abraham a prophet. And when God showed up, Abraham was negotiating with God about the fate of Sodom. What if you find 50 righteous men? Far be it from you that the righteous God will destroy the just and the unjust. What if you find 50 righteous men? And God said, if I find 50 righteous men, I will spare the land. And when God was going, he said, let my Lord not be offended with me. What if you find 45? What if you find 40? He negotiated the destiny of Sodom until he stopped at 10. That's what prophets do. Prophets are the custodians of the heritage of God in time. So when you find prophets pursuing Gucci watches and wrist watches, pursuing cars, pursuing mansions, you know that those ones are not prophets. They are hirelings. They only have the gift of word of knowledge. Because when a prophet rises, the seal of a prophet is the righteousness that he establishes over nations. The power of a prophet is that he's able to bring righteousness to a nation. Most of the people you call prophets are soothsayers. They are diviners. They are corrupt men. They are in the order of Balaam. Because they pursue gain. Gain. That, that's what they want. Gain. When you see a true prophet of God, his power is righteousness. He can bet righteousness over a nation 
until when you show up. Did you not read about Elijah on Mount Carmel? He brought down the prophets of Baal, the power and the, the heritage of a prophet are the seals of righteousness that he breaks in heaven until the earth conforms to Zion. We have not had prophets from Southern Africa. We only have gifted men who can see the color of your singlet. When prophets rise, the nation will be purged. The Bible said that oh, when Jonah entered Nineveh, Jonah, he came in the authority of the prophet. When he entered Nineveh and cried, the king tore his garment. Even the animals in Nineveh fasted. In repentance. That's a prophet. When a prophet comes into the land, he comes with a scepter of righteousness. You will see the judgment of God. Judgment. The nation will be purged. You have people showcasing your watch and doing dress code, wearing socks that match their tie, carrying paparazzi around, snapping pictures, and they say, Prophet. The prophets, they know the way of the desert. They know the cave. When they come out, they want to cry. When the prophet comes out, even the kings will know what is the Lord saying. He's coming to cry for a generation to repent. That's the power because he's an elder in Zion. He comes with verdicts, the conclusions of heaven. That's what he brings to men. The conclusions. You know, when we are not taught who a minister is, we will take pride in the wrong things. Many prophets come to me, I look at them. I just know they are fake. What I would have done as a minister, if I was protecting my name, is to avoid them. But when I look at the weight of their calling and what they would have been in Zion, I pity them. And they don't know. And so sometimes, because of the love of God, what I do is that I sit them down and I teach them Bible. I say, put your gift in your pocket. Your gift is for babes. Because when a babe doesn't have direction, he will need you to tell him when to travel and when not to travel. When you come among elders, we don't talk gift. We talk your scepter. Where are you operating in Zion? Sit down. I teach them the oracles of God. The oracles. And I've had many prophets lie down in my hotel and weep and repent. Because when I finish talking to them, they will now start confessing that they are rapists. That's when we will forget about the show on the altar. So that we can save their soul. Because if we don't save them, many will follow them to hell. I've had many, they lie down. Because they don't even know who a prophet is. A prophet is supposed to be a wonder. If a generation is blessed with prophets, that generation is blessed indeed. That's why God sends prophets. Because they are a blessing. They are a blessing. And then you come from a region that have heritage, the heritage of prophets. You are supposed to be a blessing to this generation. But if you don't know who a minister is and you don't follow the pathway for the making of a minister you will waste and violate sacred things you see all these wolves in sheep clothing gather gullible, gullible sisters and tell them when they sleep with them favor will come on them a prophet that should pull men from the head from the pit of Hades a prophet that you pull nations from the pit of Hades. Begin to lead others to death. If you were blessed by this message you just listened to, and you wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat the prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that He died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name.
Amen. If you just said this prayer, please send us an email at info at encounterjesusministry.org or info.ejfi.ng at gmail.com. You can also visit our website at www.encounterjesusministry.org. 